All right, this is James H. English. Greetings. He's from Denmark. I read recently Ooh. that the universe is expanding too fast for our theories and models to fit, increasing the Hubble tension. Do you think the problem is with our models, or is there some physics we just haven't discovered to explain this? I.e., is the rate not constant due to some undiscovered property mm. of space-time? Or is there something wrong with the data? So, so is our models data? our models off. Do we trust the data? Or do we need new physics? Essentially, what's been happening is you have the cosmic microwave background radiation, which has been a treasure trove of cosmological information. Mm -hmm. Then you have the standard way that we measure expansion. I have some object. I know uh, how fast it's moving, how fast it's moving away. It's redshift. Mm -hmm. And I also know uh, its distance based on its brightness. Right? right. And so now I can make a Hubble diagram. I fit the Planck data. I get a value of the Hubble constant. Mm -hmm. They don't agree. But the Planck is the cosmic background. Yeah. Right. The right. Planck the satellite from exactly. Europe. The Planck the European satellite. satellite. I be saying stuff. Don't you know? Uh, I be leaving stuff out, man. But that's why. That's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why you're here. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> to keep you continuous. Yeah. <laughs> so now there's new James Webb Space Telescope data. But wait, wait. Just let's set the stage. Yeah. So you have data from the early universe. Yes. You get a Hubble rate. You get a Hubble You get rate. the traditional galaxies, usually with supernova or some other exactly. standard candle. Yep. And those two numbers do not match. They do not okay. match. In my day, measurements of the expansion rate of the universe differed by a factor of two. Hmm. A factor of two. Yeah. yeah. And so now they differ by just a few percent. Right. But. The error bars. The error bars, the uncertainty is way smaller than the difference in those two measurements. Right. Yeah. So that is a more severe fact mm. than not knowing the expansion rate of the universe by a factor of two. So we had a similar problem with the ages of stars and the age of the universe, mm -hmm. which depends I remember that on one. the Hubble thing, right? And so it was, it was the cosmological data that had to be adjusted. Wait, wait, so, somebody found stars that were older than the That's universe. That's right. Stars in the halo looked like they were older than the age of the universe, mm -hmm. right? But then- And we, the headlines were, oh, catastrophe. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> well, <laughs> nothing, well, yeah, yeah. Whatever. yeah, people like ready to give up on the universe. Right. But then we realized, oh no, our cosmology needs to be improved. And so, you know, uh, what happened in the 90s, really, you know, post Kobe, that changed everything in, in cosmology, right? And then not Kobe Bryant. Not Kobe Bryant. <laughs> what say? The Kobe satellite. What, you mean right at that game after he got 80, he scored 81 points at <laughs> that game? <laughs> no, not that game. Yeah, well, so didn't the, change the cosmic either. background explorer, yeah. one of the first high precision measurements yeah. of the cosmic background. Mather and Smoot. Mm -hmm. so no, do it, Nobel so, laureates. Nobel laureates, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So circling to the Hubble tension. So tell me, so what? What's something's got to give? Yeah, something's got to give. So I think that there's something that we don't understand. I think I, I think I'm trusting the measurements, and I think that I trust the theory. The measurements look good, don't they? The measurements look good. And I was I was involved in supernova cosmology, yeah. right, and, and also weak lensing studies for looking at structure of growth and these sort of things. And so all this different data. There's there's more than one probe, right? People are using different types of stars. Right. That's where you get the confidence candles. from. It's exactly. not just one one data point from one telescope. So exactly. what James asks is, is there some physics we just haven't yet discovered? Are we missing is physics, that... or is it we, or we just have to adjust the model? Well, what, there, people coming up with these models that maybe the expansion rate of the universe, we have it like, okay, there's this initial impulse, mm. right? And then the universe evolves based on the energy densities of the constituents, of which there are three main ones, right? Radiation, mm -hmm. which is stuff that moves very fast through phase, space, but almost... Not at all through time. Mm -hmm. Matter, which moves very fast through time and almost not at all through space. And space time, which has its own energy density that we call dark energy, which doesn't move through either one, right? right. And so initially, radiation dominates, then matter comes to dominate, then dark energy, i.e. space-time energy density, comes to dominate. And each one, you can look at what the expansion rate would be of the universe. But here's the thing. Once we discovered the Higgs particle, we first time we discovered what is known as a scalar quantum field. What do I mean by that, right? So the, we'll the, ask you that. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> Don't so ask yourself at, these questions. That's so, for us to do. So if you, one, of, one of the things that we look what at is, is square. What is a square? You, know what? you and I don't need to be here. Let's go. Let's go I'll get a beer. Ask myself questions and answer them. Yeah. Who needs to? I'll query myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. you you read them. No, yeah, no. But let's just back up. In the United States, we surely would have discovered the Higgs boson. Oh yeah, uh, with our superconducting super collider, yep. whose budget was canceled right around when peace broke out in Europe. Mm. Uh, right uh, between eighty nine and ninety three. Procurements. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and so the center of mass of particle physics moved to Europe, 
to yep. CERN, to the Large Hadron Collider, yeah, yeah. they discovered the Higgs boson. Okay, right. So now what happened? So here's what here's the deal. Here's why I bring this up, because it's what is known as a scalar field. So when you think about the fields that you know of, right, they're like, oh, the electric field, I have a charge, it has an electric field. Magnetic field, I have a charge that's moving, it generates a magnetic field. Gravitational field, oh, there's this matter. So every field you know of, there's some source in matter. But then here come the particle physics. They're like, oh, yeah, you know why every electron is identical? Because They don't say it this way, this is mine. You know why every electron is identical? <laughs> Same reason every C note, musical note is identical because they're not the real thing. The real thing is the string or the air that's vibrating, right? Wow. So they they invoke this idea of quantum fields. So the quantum field just permeates all of space time and is just there. But nothing is real in that quantum field. In well, there, well in excitations there. Yeah. of the field are our particles, right? So they're the permanent ones and they're the virtual ones, right? So, so we measure the excitations as particles. As particles, yes. right? Now here's what happens though. They say, oh, there's this thing called a Higgs field. It's just there. It's just everywhere in space at all times. It's just there, right? Scalar field, no source. And I'm like, in my mind, as a young scientist, I'm like, is that real? Then they discover it. They ring that damn field and create the particle. I'm like, wow. So now what can you do? Oh, inflation. Looks like the Alan Guth creates inflation. Looks like the universe rapidly expanded. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll create another scalar field. I call it the inflaton field. So now you see some dynamics happening. You can just create a new field. Mm -hmm. So some people are doing that. They're saying maybe the universe's expansion rate hasn't just been what we think it of as simple as we think it is. Right. And it could, and then another question is- There'd be yet is, another phenomenon acting on the expansion rate exactly. beyond the three that exactly. we have characterized. What do we, exactly. do we have an idea of what it might be? Is some there any, weird quantum You field. come up with something. Is, yeah, you come is, up with something. Is yeah. weird the scientific term you're going with here? Sure, right. sure. So but let's, let me clarify here. So this notion that the expansion rate is misbehaving, right. let me characterize yeah. it that way. Yeah. That just means it doesn't match what our three most potent models would give us for it. Right. Okay, yeah. so do we introduce a fourth accounting, yeah. or do we say that one of these are wrong? Right. Or, or maybe they're all working in harmony. Or each of those have well, to be adjusted. In there's an assumption within there as well that comes from the cosmological principle that the universe is isotropic and homogeneous. Mm -hmm. And now people are looking. If I look in that direction, I look in that direction, I look in that direction, is the expansion rate the same versus distance in every particular direction? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why we have big surveys coming on, like uh, the Vera Rubin Telescope LSST. Because we typically have pencil beam surveys for the most part, or surveys that don't go too LSST. deep. LSST. Was the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope? Yeah, mm -hmm. but we're astronomers and we don't like going that way. We don't play that, so we just named it after one of our. One of you our guys hooks. just like acronyms. You're just the <laughs> no. you're like the laziest. The group of people. Telescope. <laughs> yes, yeah, she discovered dark matter in the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah. And speaking of, you know, another telescope that's on coming is the Nancy Grace Roman. The Nancy telescope. Grace Roman Telescope. So it's looking for dark matter, or dark energy, or both. Both. Both, both okay. of them. It's going to be a survey telescope. Yeah. Everybody knows that, Neil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Nancy Grace Roman, going back to the ASP, she valued the ASP so much that when she passed away recently, she left the organization a few million dollars. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, listen. Whoa. We Astronomers did have millions of dollars? <laughs> <laughs>